Hello, this is Laura Suchin, and you're listening to an Oshawa Museum podcast. Today's topic is White Bronze Monuments in Union Cemetery. This podcast series aims to actively promote awareness and appreciation of our community's history, highlighting remarkable artifacts, documents, photographs, or events from our past. We hope you enjoy the podcast. As you look around Union Cemetery, you will note that most of the grave markers are made of marble or granite. However, scattered throughout the cemetery grounds are distinct bluish-gray monuments. Although referred to as white bronze monuments, this is actually a misnomer because they were made of a refined zinc, which was referred to as white bronze, to distinguish it from dark or antique bronze. In Union Cemetery, there are 13 such monuments. They were manufactured by the Monumental Bronze Company in Bridgeport, Connecticut, beginning in 1875. The stones were at their most popular during the period 1880s and 1890s. The company also made Union and Confederate Civil War monuments, vases, all kinds of statuary, and medallions. Sculptors were known to be the best in the business. The original casting was done in the Bridgeport, Connecticut foundry. Subsidiary plants in Chicago, Detroit, Des Moines, New Orleans, Philadelphia, and St. Thomas, Ontario, became finishing and distribution centers. Since Bridgeport and its subsidiaries did not have showrooms, grave markers were sold through catalogs and part-time salesmen. The White Bronze Company of St. Thomas, Ontario was the sole Canadian franchise for the Monumental Bronze Company. It operated from 1883 until 1900. Monuments came in sizes ranging from a few inches to almost 15 feet in height. Embellishments such as flowers, crosses, nameplates, figures, and symbols could be added to personalize the monument at no cost. A monument could be purchased relatively inexpensively, with prices ranging from a few dollars upwards of $5,000. The Grand Phillips family gravestone today faces busy King Street West and is a wonderful example of a white bronze monument. The shaft of the stone stands over three meters tall and is graced by a statue of hope, which stands over a meter tall. All letters and inscriptions are cast solid on the monuments. And one of the great features was that all monuments could be customized with removable and interchangeable plates. The company said this would present a finished appearance to the stone These plates could be personalized with emblems, inscriptions, and mottos. If purchased at the time of erection, there was no cost. If you needed additional tablets in the future, they could be purchased for what the company claimed was much less than the price of stonework. The four removable tablets on the Phillips family gravestone are adorned with faith, suffer the children, a golden sheaf of wheat, and information on the deceased. The entire gravestone most likely cost $410 or a little over $9,000 in today's money. Bronze is composed of pure cast zinc, which is similar to gold and silver in that it is a pure metal. An 1885 issue of Scientific American detailed the manufacturing process of the white bronze monuments. Initially, designs were modeled in clay and reproduced in plaster of Paris from which a cast was taken. This procured a perfect metal pattern from which the monument was molded and cast. The different parts of the monument were joined together by pouring molten metal of the same material as the castings. Finally, the monument was given a sandblast, which gave it its beautiful appearance. And according to the manufacturer, much better than copper bronze, which becomes black once exposed to the elements. When compared with marble or granite stone, white bronze gravestones were much cheaper. They were weighed about a quarter of the weight of stone and could be transported cheaper because of this. The stones were actually hollow. They're not porous and moss would not grow on them. The company also noted letters would not chip and it would be readable for many years to come. 
The letters were very crisp and you could get detail with white bronze that you could not get with stone. These monuments were also known to not crack. It's, there's some speculation that Oshawa would have had a good salesman for white bronze monuments. To have 13 monuments in one cemetery is quite unique. The Monumental Bronze Company told its prospective salesmen that business was almost inexhaustible and would only grow with population and wealth. The company noted that by 1882 they had already installed more than 12,000 monuments in the U.S. The catalog noted that any person with even the slightest business tact could manage this business and it didn't involve a great outlay of capital as other trade businesses warranted. Only the best artists were employed on a permanent basis and they would come up with new designs often and keep salesmen in business. Agents were encouraged to equip themselves with an outfit which was samples of the work that could be purchased from the catalogs. With these samples, agents could show prospective customers the color and finish of the work. They could also purchase a model gravestone for show for approximately $24, which would indicate how the full-size monument would look. The company liked to tell its salesmen that successful work required good tools. The White Bronze Company advertised their monuments were almost indestructible due to their composition and were impervious to the ravages of frost, moss, and lichen and would not change color. The raised lettering remained legible and the removable tablets made customization easy. Scientific American proclaimed the refined zinc was so well adapted to monumental purposes that it will ultimately supersede all other materials. Of course, these claims elicited strong opposition from the marble and granite dealers and carvers who claimed the bronze monuments would not hold up to the ravages of climate and in fact look like cheap imitations of stone. Some cemeteries even went as far as to ban the monuments. Any monument not made of stone due to pressure from the stone industry. Stone dealers lobbied to say the stones were cheap looking and would not hold up for the years to come. The Monumental Bronze Company went to great lengths to promote the durability and permanence of white bronze. Advertising described the product as superior perfected zinc that will resist the effects of weather for all time. To further prove the material superiority over granite or marble, the ad praises the clarity, perfection, and permanence white bronze can offer for inscriptions. All letters are raised, the text stresses. They are cast on solid and cannot be chipped or broken off like raised letters in stone. Another advertisement aimed specifically at funerary monuments, takes the point even further. While marble is entirely out of date, granite soon gets moss grown and discolored, requires constant expense and care, and eventually crumbles back to earth, white bronze would last forever. The company's products continued their popularity through the late 19th and early 20th centuries, as consumers often deemed the marble and granite products to be too expensive. But in 1914, the federal government took over the company facilities in the United States in order to make gun mounts and munitions for World War I, and the firm never produced another grave marker. After the war, monumental bronze executives realized that public demand had significantly shifted away from white bronze toward granite and other natural stones. Demand further declined when many cemeteries began prohibiting metal grave markers. Nevertheless, business continued with the production of metal panels used for adding the names of more family members to existing monuments, as well as fabricating castings for automobile and radio parts. Its increasingly unprofitable business during the Great Depression, however, resulted in the company declaring bankruptcy in 1939. This has been an Oshawa Museum podcast. Thank you for listening. 
If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our other historical video podcasts and subscribe to our channel.